Hi YouTube, today I wanted to talk about, oh it's really dark, I don't, there we, uh, today I wanted to talk about my week, cause I wanted to just do a little vlog, um, so I'll start with Monday, or Sunday, I'll start with Sunday and I will, um, go through my week, it's only Wednesday, but. I can tell you w what my plans for the rest of the week are, at the very least. Um, I wish it wasn't so dark. Isn't that mean? Try... Uh... White... Oh, my internet's not working. Oh, well. Um, so, I'll start with Sunday. Um, on Sunday, I went to work. Um, I work at a gallery. And, yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, it was pretty cool. And I only worked for three hours, and then I came home. And I sat at my computer, and then I cooked some soup, uh, and then I went to bed. It was fun. Um, and then Monday, I had school, um, and I was in class, and I made two paintings. Um, maybe I'll put them here. Uh, there were two distraught blue children. One was the, the 21 kid, and then the other was that one kid that, like, starts screaming when the blue light comes on um but i thought that it was a pretty productive day and yeah and then yeah i went to my other class later in the evening and i did some writing for my thesis paper i wrote about the internet and when I came home, I watched a nice video essay about uh, Filthy Frank and iDubs and all those guys. Um, I know they're kind of like... It's funny because they were... The whole video essay was about how they were anti-vloggers in the 2010s. And how they were really subversive with their humor and like really abject and all of that mixed together led to some really interesting artistic merit that I don't think um, had really been considered at the time uh, but now that I'm thinking about it it's really funny how we're in an era of post irony with regard to contemporary humor and um those guys they're at least in the circles that i interact with a lot of people think that they're really cringy and like try hard now they're like one step back behind they're one step behind with the evolution of how humor is received so the things that were funny in like 2010 to 2013 stopped being funny and they were cringy and then in the late 2010s up to like 2020 they became ironically funny again so it was like we're 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 making fun of this because it's not funny anymore and now in the 2020s uh we're in an era of we're back to kind of unironically enjoying like rage comics and like lol random cringe culture it's not cringe anymore it's just how it is um and i've even noticed myself engaging in that but the the video essay called them the cancer crew which was really i get i, un I understand why i thought it was just kind of that was cringy in itself um 
but you know in the mid 2010s they were really funny and now they're not funny and i think in the later part of this decade they'll be ironically funny which is weird because i think the 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 way they were funny was already ironic so it'll be interesting to see where that happens um or i'm just making shit up but i thought that was interesting so i watched that video essay and i realized just how influential those um internet personas were for me uh and they influence these videos and my paintings. Uh, so that was my Monday. Um, Tuesday, yesterday. Uh, I got to school at mm, like 8.30. Yeah, 8.30. I bought a coffee, an iced coffee. Yes, a nice coffee. Honey cardamom flavor. Um, and then I helped uh, move some easels around because the elevator was broken. And I got a free sheet of paper. Uh, and then I wrote more of my paper. Um, and this time I dissected... Um, I really like trashy, exploitative reality TV shows um, and also true crime, crime content, but I didn't write about the true crime stuff because I think that gets a little more into the territory of making fun of subjects, and I try not to do that. Um, but I was talking a lot about... I love Hoarders. Hoarding Buried Alive is one of my favorite TV shows. Um and all those weird TLC shows that aren't really educational in any way. They're just really, like, pathetic and kind of depressing and abhorrent and abject. Oh, there's that word again. Um, but, yeah, I was really thinking about it, and I thought, huh, a lot of what I do... Is a little similar to this but I'm imbuing my things with um, like a pathos the lack of agency and my dudes are is to humanize them not to exploit them and I think the, rem the removal of agency in a show like hoarders is on it it's obviously it's for entertainment but the the lack of agency is to the detriment of the dudes the guy the fellows in the show and the ladies the dudes and dudettes um and that's what i don't want to do but i think there's a similar thing happening there and it's also just funny and i will i wanted to write about to catch a predator but i didn't because again that gets into weird hairy territory where i'm just making fun of people because that's what to catch a predator does rightfully so uh those the folks on that show are bad um but i cannot deny that tcap is something that i actively and passively enjoy chris hansen's podcast is something I listen to in the studio while I'm working. Um, I love Chris Hansen. He's such an interesting, dare I say, he's a journalist, but the persona that he puts on is funny in a good way. Chris Hansen, if you're watching this, you're cool. Um, but I didn't write about TCAP. I wrote about the other stuff. Um, so I wrote about that yesterday. That was my Tuesday. Uh, and, well, no, that wasn't my whole Tuesday. So I did that, and then I prepared for a studio visit that was supposed to be at 4 p.m., but I messed up the date. It was actually the following day today, which I will get into that shortly. Um, 
and then I had an art history class. It was really boring and tiring. And yeah, I like art history, but I don't like the art history class I'm in because yeah. Um, and then I came home and what did I do when I came home? I had a cup of tea. Yeah. I went to I went to bed. Yeah, I went to bed. And then I woke up this morning um tired with a I wake up tired and with a headache every day and it doesn't go away. Um but it's okay. Um I woke up today, I slept in for like an extra 30 minutes, and I got to school at about 10 o'clock, and I went down to the wood shop and I talked about an idea, I want to build some frames, and they were like, don't use cheap wood because it won't be archival and I was like well I'm poor I have no money uh, I haven't bought groceries in two months yeah I can't do that and so then I went back to my studio and I was doing some why do people always call me when I'm recording hold on hi sorry I was on the phone. Um, what was I saying? Tuesday. Sorry, I was on the phone for a really long time. Um, uh, I had my art history class. I came home. Oh, I woke up this mo this morning. Yes, headache, tired. School at ten. Yes. Wood shop. Right. I'm broke. So, uh, so I went back to my studio and I was doing the math to make 15 frames at uh, 12 by 16 inches and it was like 70 something dollars and I thought I can't do that. I have no money. I'll, I'll, I won't be able to pay my bills if I do that. and. So it's either have a really bad BFA or be homeless. Um, both are bad because one will set me up for failure in life and the other one will set me up for failure in life. Um, but my uh, good friend helped me. Uh, she helped me with math and then she helped me scrounge around for a bunch of scrap wood so instead of 70 something dollars, I'm probably only gonna have to pay 30, which just means I can't buy groceries for another couple of weeks, but that's okay, because I've already, you know. Um, and then, yeah. I kind of hung out for a while. I did another painting. Um, I did another painting and then I had that studio visit where I talked about my art and desperately tried to explain that I'm not a white supremacist because I'm not. Um, and she was very receptive of it. She was one of my committee members. Um, and we had a good conversation. We talked about clowns a little bit. Um, it was a really good studio visit, probably the one of the better ones that I've had ever. And then immediately after that, I went to class again, and I just wrote more of my paper. I wrote about Andy Kaufman, who's funny. And yeah, and then I came home, or no, I didn't come home after class. Then I did another painting after class. I did a still life of some fruit. Yeah, and, and then I came 
Hobe. And then immediately when I came home tonight, I said, I'm going to record this video and talk about my week. And so here I am talking about my week, and then after this, I'm prob I'm gonna take a shower, um, maybe have a cup of tea, um, and then go to bed and try to sleep. And then I'm gonna wake up tomorrow again with tired, tired, and with a headache. And I'm gonna go to class and have crit all day. And then I have to go to a, a board event for an exhibition committee that I'm on where I have to be about around a lot of very wealthy people and hide um, how upset that I feel that I am, I have no money. I'm not financially well off in any way and neither is my family. Um, And yeah, my, my mom can barely pay her mortgage and I can barely pay my rent. And so my mom can't help me pay my rent and, um, I can't put gas in my, I can't really put gas in my car. Um, so I'm going to be thinking about that the whole time and then I'm going to give a speech and probably steal some of the food. Uh, and take it home so I can eat the food uh, and then probably not gonna paint tomorrow because I have to wear my nice clothes and then I'm gonna come home probably do a bunch more homework a bunch more writing I don't know what my last thing I'm gonna write about in this part of my paper is gonna be I keep thinking about um, Pier Paolo Pasolini Pasolini because um, he's been greatly influential for me specifically Salo or the 120 days of Sodom which I talked about in my one video about movies that I like and so I'm probably going to be thinking about that I might I'm probably going to watch Salo pretty soon here I've seen it probably like 10 times at this point but I want to watch it again and think about it more critically than usual um, but I worry that I can't write about that in my paper because um much of Pasolini's films are deeply imbued with uh, criticism towards politics and capitalism, uh, which I'm not interested in either of those things. Um, I just think they're very absurd and kind of funny. I think Salo is absurd and extreme in a way that's funny. I think the circumstances in which these libertines reside is insane. And I've read the book, and the book is even more insane. And I think in contrast to the book, the movie is even more insane because the book is um, just meant to be read for um, pleasure. It was the Marquis de Sade's like weird prison fan fiction and he never finished it and the whole thing is like just meant to be you're meant to like pleasure yourself while reading it not dissimilar to like a um a lemon fic or something on deviantart um but you know they stormed the bastille and then it got lost but then they found it um and then the film is not at all meant for that. It's meant to repulse the viewer and it's meant to make you upset. Um, but the plot is the same. You know, these four rich men kidnap a bunch of children and take them away to a little chateau. But this one's during World War II. The film is during World War II. So then obviously it's a critique on fascism um, and the wealthy. And they do so much crazy stuff to the kids. Um, and it's just absurd and weird. And it's got, like, they're all, like, ugly old guys, which... Hello, have you seen my paintings? Um, 
and it's just insane and it's beautiful and it's upsetting um and i just i think that movie and the 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 book in a different way has impacted my view on art making a lot or not maybe not art making but what i think about when i make art um yeah there's this picture of me uh, maybe i'll remember to put it here um when i was in high school i was 15 and i applied f for like a college prep art class and i brought in a portrait that i had done of the president from that film in the titular scene where he's eating human feces and he's smiling and he's like it's awesome um i love that movie so much sorry about that my video froze and i was worried about losing things um, so I love that movie so much, and I th I think about it all the time. I always talk about how, not always, but I, th I, um, I used to talk about it a lot, and I still think about it all the time. Um, the first time I ever watched Solo, when I was like 14, um, after chasing it down for a really long time, and I finally learned how to pirate movie, or no, my friend gave it to me on like a little thumb drive and I finally watched it um I literally thought about it for a month it was in the forefront of my brain for an entire month I was like having dreams about it um I was thinking about it all the time um and I really think that it was just like super formative to my practice and I just love that movie a lot I really do um, so I think I'm gonna write about it in my thesis paper but not for the political commentary reasons but for the like insanity of the whole situation depicted in the film and the book maybe one day I'll like I'll do a reading I don't know so that's my plan for thursday and then friday i think i'm gonna drive an hour away to see a show that my friend has at a museum because i love her dearly and i want to support her there's also a lecture that I want to attend at noon. I don't know how successful I'm going to be at both of these things. And then I'm gonna go home, probably do more homework. Maybe I'll paint on Friday. I don't know. And then I'll sleep and then I'll wake up again And then I'll go to work all day. And then I'll come home and I'll do more homework. And then I'll go to bed and then I'll wake up again. And I'll go to work again all day. The same homework and then go to bed and then wake up on Monday and do it all over again. Yeah. So yeah um i uh yeah that's my plan that's my week that's how my week's been um yeah comment down below about how your week has been and what your plans for the rest of your week are if it's the middle of the week but only if it's the middle of the week and then, um, yeah, uh, comment down below about your week and remember to smash that 
uh, like button, hit the bell icon, subscribe if you haven't already, all of the things, and I'll see you next week. I have another sketchbook saga video in the works. I've already recorded it. I just need to edit it and post it, but I want to break it up by posting more relatable content like this one. So yeah, um, I'll uh, see you whenever I see you. Comment about your week, please. I, I'm, I wanna know, I, I love reading your guys' comments. I read all of them. Bye.